two more masking techniques. In this video, I'm going to look at two other masking techniques, luminosity masking and detail masking. The luminosity masking, just the subtle changes that will be applied when you use luminosity masking. And I've got given a couple of examples here just to show you the differences. Yes, they are subtle, but the differences they can make to the image is really, really good. In the second half of the video, I'm going to look at the detail masking. And I'm going to use one of the dragons because there is quite a lot of detail in that. And also there's a couple of tips and tricks in there that I mentioned previously in another video about processing and refresh rates and speed of the software. So. You may want to watch that as well if you're finding that the software in your machine lags slightly when you're doing masking. It works great for mine. Uh, my machine only runs in 16 gig of RAM. It's a late 2012 model and it's running fine when I do it this way. When I use the full mask and I erase the edges first, I notice that it does lag, but that's to do with my computer just need to update it at some point. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, with this I'm gonna show you two examples. This is the more subtle effect with the luminosity masking. So for this one, I am going to create a new adjustment layer. And all I'm going to do for this is I'm gonna turn the exposure up slightly. So it's a bit there. Put the smart contrast up. I'm gonna push the highlights so as you can see how they have affected around here. I'm going to take the shadows back. For me, I'm going to add a slight more accent to it with the AI accent, just to about there. The structure I may add, I'll just tell you in a second. Yep, why not? Then I'll go back into the layer and I'll go Edit Mask and press Luminosity. So you can see the subtle differences here. What I'll do is I'll flick the layer on and off. So that's it with the layer off as it was. That's it with the luminosity masking. And what it's done is it only worked on the lighter pixels. So if I turn that off, you'll notice along here, any of the lighter areas down the tree here, up in here, this bit up here, once I turn it back on, do you see the difference that makes just with the luminosity? Now, I prefer that image. It's a punchier image, but that's just a subtle change. Okay, with this image, what you're going to see is quite a considerable difference with this. So I'm going to add a couple to, to this. Uh, what I've already got in here, if you saw the coffee break with Vanelli, you will see that this is a build-up of the overlays that I gave you. So if I turn these off, I'll just let you see. So the rain in the distance, middle ground, and foreground. So that's how that was built up. Right, the next thing I am going to do, again, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. In this adjustment layer, I am going to go into the light panel and I'm going to push the exposure of this just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to push the highlights again. I'm also, for this one, let's do something just a wee bit different. Let's get into creative and add a lot to this one. So let's just try the top few lots. Two, three. Let's go for Long Beach. Then I'm going to get back into my adjustment layer. And I'm going to go Luminosity Mask. So you can see here with the mask, the parts that it's hidden and the parts that it's revealed, the luminosity revealed in the lighter colours. But I can also adjust this. I quite like the effect that's given. So lighter in the foreground, lighter sky, I'm not so keen on because I want to keep the moody image. So what I can actually do is I can go into the mask and edit the mask with a brush now that I've applied the luminosity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this, which means everything that you can see here will go black and it will darken the sky back to the original image. So if I paint in there, And I'll just leave it at that. I won't go any further with this one. You'll notice my mask. And once I click done, missed a tiny bit in there. 
once I click done, you'll notice that the mask has changed. So the luminosity in this one is only affecting the lighter areas in here. I could have went in and added the AI structure and everything else with it, but if I flick the mask off, flick the layer off, sorry, see that subtle difference? That just helps bring everything forward. From here, I can then go in if I wanted to AI enhance and push it again. And I'll flick that on and off again, get back into my layer. Turn that off, turn it back on. So you see it is a subtle difference, but sometimes the subtle differences make the big difference. If you look at the sky, there's no change in the sky whatsoever. And that's because after applying the luminosity mask, I didn't like how bright the sky was, so I painted it out. I used the arrays and painted it out. Okay, for this example of detail masking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a new image layer. And I'm going to add one of the dragons from the dragon pack for this because there is quite a bit of detail in these. So I'm going to take this one here and it'll drop in place. In a previous video, I showed you to mask out the dragon with the brush and I told you to use erase. If we use paint, this happens and for these dragons in the refresh rate of the software and your processors this is actually quite a quicker way I found this a lot quicker so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in and I'm just going to go around all the details I've kept the brush softness at zero as you see it's a hard edge the opacity at 100 the size for this just happens to be 46. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint round and I'm just going to, as if you're colouring in, I suppose. And I'm going to take it round there. And I'm just making sure that all the way around the dragon, I show white. Because if you remember, if you're doing this, what happens is the software and the computer are working in unison to refresh the rate each time of what the software is doing. So the less information we give it, the quicker it should work. In my head anyway, that's how it works. So what I'm going to do is this. So we paint that in like so. And I'll just bring it right down there. And I've actually made them too close to the water. You're probably aware that in other programs like Photoshop, uh, if you move an object within a layer that the mask moves with it. So I'm going to show you a kind of workaround in Luminar for the same idea. It's not much of a workaround, but it is a workaround. If you go over to, onto your mask and you right click on your mask and you click fill, it fills back in the area you had. Go into layer transform and I'm just going to move the dragon up to there. I'm just going to put him there so that he's not touching the water. And I'm going to click done. Then I'm going to go to the mask and I'm going to go invert. Then I'm going to go into brush and paint again. So it may seem not too much of a work round, but it is a quite a quick one considering what the software does with the masks currently. I'm sure all this will change in future incarnations of the software. But for now, this is one way I've discovered to do it. If you know another way, please let me know. The more information we share, the better. So I'm going to do that and then just fill the dragon in. As you notice, I'm not going too far over the edge. I just want a tiny bit of white to show. And that, again, as I say, is to do with the processor and the processing speed of your computer. I'm running 16 gig of RAM and I'm running Mojave and also it is a late 2012 model of an iMac. Someone had asked me what system I'm running and it's got a 200, 256 SSD in it as well. So that's it. That's all that this is running and it handles Luminar really well. So what I'm going to do here, I can take the brush down if I want but I'll just leave it at that. So you, now you can see the entire detail in this dragon. So what we have to do now is go in and erase 
the white that we don't want to see. And that is like the rest of my videos, it's going in and taking your time to do it. But at the same time, because we don't have this massive white, the refresh is quicker, the processor is quicker. So I'm going to zoom in just a couple of points here. And I'm going to choose Erase. And I'm going to get an Erase as close to this as I possibly can. I work in sections with this. I don't go all the way around it and then get back in and fill. So I work in sections. So for example, in here, I'll get as close as I possibly can with this. And then I'll zoom in again. And I know the tip in one of the previous videos was work about around 50%. As you can see that, that's what I'm doing just now before I go in to do the detail. And that again seems to help with the processing. It's not, see how quickly that refreshed. If you look at the last video, you may notice that it didn't refresh as quick as that. So that's, I suppose, another tip for you. I'm just going to take that out just now before I get and do the detail in here. And I'm not going to do the entire dragon, so you don't have to sit and watch me doing the entire dragon. I'm just going to work a couple of areas in here, then I'm going to get up and do the head of the dragon as well. Now that I'm quite happy with that, I can zoom in. And that's me at 100%. And you can see the edges of the dragon at 100%, there is a slight blur in them. So what I'm going to do is take the softness up slightly, and this is a guess at each point. But at the time when I take the softness up, because I'm working closer, I'm going to take the brush down. And I'm using the square brackets in the keyboard. So if I go in there and paint, and again I'm doing this with the mouse, I normally do it with my tablet. Because ergonomically, it's a million times easier to do it with a tablet. So I'll just take that there. So you can see how that has sped up the process quite considerably when you're doing this. And I'll just take a couple of bits out here. Like so. And then if I am going into any fine detail, like in here, that's the smallest the brush goes. As you can see, it won't go down any smaller than 10. So in these areas here, I take it in. And you'll notice I've got more of a rounded edge on that now. But because this is your creation, no one's going to know any different, to be honest. And that's it. You're just trying to make a pleasing image for yourself. If other people like it, all the better. But it's for yourself you're doing these. So that's how I work the detail in this. If I wanted a straight edge on a Mac, I'd click at the start, hold down shift and click along. And as you can see, it draws straight lines in between. It basically joins up the points. And you can do it in curves as well. So I'll leave it at that for this and I'll just show you on a curve. So if I click there, then there, And then there, you can see there's a tiny bit of white showing. That's because I'm not going into the dragon enough. So that's how I would do the detail in this. And then if I wanted to, once it was done, that probably have been quicker, to be honest, just doing that. But at the same time, it was to show you as an example how to do it. Once it's all done, like that area between here and here, that white, I would take the brush up. And then do that. And then just take it out. So you're taking out the main area first, or the detail first, and then going in and taking out the larger white that's left. Right, I'm going to move up to the dragon's head. You see how quickly that refreshed as well. I'm going to take the brush back down. I know the softness is at 10 because it's working with everything else for me. So what I'm going to do is click in there. And I'm overlapping onto the dragon ever so slightly. I'm taking away a couple of pixels at the most if I'm doing it right. And I'm holding down shift and I'm just joining the dots here. Each mouse click, which I hope you can hear. So that's how I would do the detail for a lot of these images. 
and any I wanted to go back in and sort, just freehand. And some that I thought I could do freehand, I would. Like these areas here, as I say, if you use a tablet, you'll see how much easier it is to do this by using a tablet. And that's just basically, as you can tell, it's the ergonomics of it. Because currently, I am drawing like this. With a tablet, I would be drawing like that. More freehand, better ergonomics. So if you're doing a lot of this kind of work, I would suggest, if it's viable for you, to get a tablet. I, there's plenty of brands out there. I've tried a few. For me, the best one and the kind of leaders in it, I think, are Wacom. So I would, I would really recommend them. And you get them in various prices various sizes as well. For me I use the A3 Pro, uh, Intuos Pro and I've, it's lasted for years and actually I have another one which is down here which is the CTE640 and I've had this since 2007 and it's still working. So that's why I'm saying I'm quite happy to recommend Wacom for these. They're absolutely brilliant for this. Right, so hopefully that will let you see how to work the detail as well. And from what we've done with only adding so much white, it's let you see how quickly the refresh rate works. Hopefully you get something from that. And hopefully, especially in the second half of the video, when we look to the detail masking, perhaps one of the tips that I said about using the paint in option and then erasing what's left instead of having the software refreshing the entire area first. I know in a previous video when I used one of the dragons as well, I did erase first and every time I was refreshing it was quite laggy. So that's just one of the things you discover as you're doing this because I, I found it a tiny bit annoying when I was doing it and I wanted to see if I did it the opposite way, how much it would quicker it would be. And it is, it's a million times quicker than that. So I really enjoyed discovering that. It's another thing that I've discovered within this. Hopefully you managed to pick up something from this and hopefully it's been helpful. So that, that's the main thing about these videos, that they're helpful to you and they're helpful within the software. As I mentioned as well about the Wacom tablets, I'm not endorsing Wacom in any way at all. It's just what I use and I find them brilliant. The longevity of them I find great. As I say, I've got one there from 2007 that still works. I've also got my uh, A3 Pro, my Intuos 4 A3 Pro, which is a great one as well, and that still works. And I just recently had to replace the pen in that. So that's it, and that, I've had that for many, many years as well. So if you're thinking about doing a lot of compositing or even in your normal editing, it might be worth trying a tablet. If you know someone that's got one, ask to try it. As I say, the ergonomics working like this to erase round edges compared to using a pen. It goes without saying, it's more natural doing this. So if you get the chance, try one out. If you already have one, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about with this. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to check out some more videos, please check them out in the channel below. If you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be absolutely fantastic and really appreciated. Stay safe, thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.